It's a rainy night in Sullivan County, Tennessee. 1050, go ahead and show me out here. 169 at Gravely and Limited. Two cars have been involved in a collision with each other, possible injuries. People drive on dry roads for so long that when it gets wet, they kind of forget that it gets slick. There's a lot more crashes. We're getting close. Ma'am, are you OK? What's going on? <laughs> Good, slow, deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. I don't, I can't. He did it. He told me. You got a panic attack? OK. <laughs> In Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Travis Jackson commands the scene of a horrific accident. Where's the other base? Other people are down in the Jeep down hurt. the hill. Okay. Were y'all involved? So what happened? Y'all just We in? went to break to turn, and then all of a sudden, boom, got hit in the rear end. This gentleman, he's going to check you out. Are you hurting anywhere? My back's hurting, but her head, she went all the way forward and snapped okay. all the way back. I saw her head going. So. Both, both of you wearing your seatbelts? Yeah. Yes. They're complaining of injuries. They're going to be checked out by AMS right now. The vehicle one, which was the Jeep, pulled up, stopped, make a left turn onto the side street. And apparently this vehicle was coming down through, didn't see it, and rear-ended it. You can look at the damage, and the damage corroborates that story. You guys going to be OK? I think so. Uh, well, you got to have a good night, OK? You're almost home. I understand. Everybody seems OK. Nobody's getting transported. Once the women whose vehicle was rear-ended leave the scene, Deputy Jackson questions the driver who allegedly caused the accident. Are you OK? <laughs> now, I know you're upset right now. I just got to ask you about what happened. I looked up for two seconds to change the song on my phone, and I looked back Careful. up, and they were stopped. And I tried to stop, but my car slid because of the rain. All I can remember is just smashing into them and thinking about it. <laughs> I've literally had it for two weeks, and I just totally These things happen. Trust me, this is not the end of the world type thing. And think about it like this. It could be a whole bunch worse. Most important thing is that you're OK, though. Take care, OK? Right now, it's a high-stress situation. She's just acting in the moment. When she has time to think about it and relax a little bit, she's, trust me, she's going to be thankful that everything happened the way it did. You can see pretty extensive damage. And for no, nobody to be hurt, that's a that's a good night. We got you away, man. That works for me. Thank you. As the rain wears on in Sullivan County, 70 miles through the mountains in Ashe County, North Carolina. Sergeant Aaron Reed responds to a report of a violent family incident. Right now we're going to a domestic call. Initially came out as a uh, assault had occurred. Somebody had been slapped. They've called back and said that the male subject had assaulted somebody with a hammer, so now we're running emergency traffic because we do have a subject with a hammer. Apparently, there's several family members involved. The male subject has the hammer is an elderly man, possibly with dementia. He may not understand what's going on. Something about the situation may just have him scared. Okay, what's going on? Me and my brother was arguing, and then um, my mom was trying to keep my dad out of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then he pushed her through the door and came in there and then took, hauled off and punched me really hard back in the back of my head and then kicked me in the hip. And I walked across the porch trying to get away from him, and he kept trying to punch me in the face. So I picked up the hammer to make him back away, and he wouldn't back away from me, and he grabbed my arm really hard and tried to break it and take the hammer out of my Are you bruised anywhere or anything, I'm bleeding? Not bruised, but... I... Where did you say he kicked you? 
he kicked me right here in the hip. Okay, do you think you're bruised on the hip? No, I looked. Okay, what's your relation? He's my stepdad. He's your stepdad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is this your mom? Yeah, it is. He also shoved her uh, mm -hmm. in the other bed and then shoved her on the porch when he was, she was trying to get him off of me. Okay. What happened from your perspective? I got in between them and I put her in the bedroom and shut the door and my husband came at me and pushed mm -hmm. me out of the way and opened the door and come in. The, he slung me on the bed and come after her. Okay. If y'all could stay right here for me, let me go here and talk to the other deputy. Deputy Tony Blevins has already questioned the alleged victim's stepfather, Leroy Rash, and her sibling, Jesse. The young boy, you know, the 16-year-old that's fighting with her, has got marks on his arm. So Where'd they come from? From her. He's got marks, are they visible? Yeah, heavily? It's just, yeah, it's on his arm, you know. It's just brother and sister fighting, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna well do, do one. all, yeah. Yeah. How are you? Right. Are you hurt anywhere? No. no. You're okay? I'm, I'm fine. Dude. All right. Uh, it's a wonder my fist ain't sore because I hit Grace in the back of the head because she kept on and on and on. Uh -huh. I was trying to hit her in the mouth and she turned her head. You're going to go to jail. Stand up. Turn around and put your well, hands up. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, we're not waiting no. anymore. Stand you, up. Let me explain. You're going to go with him if you don't move your hand. Let me explain. Go ahead and stand up. Jesse, quit. Leave the officers alone. Okay. Just turn around, put your hands on your back. All right, if, if you're not going to give any trouble, we'll put them on the ground. I front, had okay? strokes, and okay. if you hurt me, okay. we're, we're going to be easy on you. We're not going to hurt you. Well, you better watch my fist, because it'll hit you. Well, don't do I that. I will hurt you if you do that. <laughs> Right the state law says if you punch your family member in the face, we have to take you. We'll walk on down to the car. You can sit down. I don't want you to fall. That's his medicines. Yeah. Okay. We can take it off. Yes, yeah, so you can push if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just sit tight right there. Okay. Can I have some air, please? Yeah, I'll crack a window for you. After Leroy Rash sees a judge, bond will be set. And if paid, he will be able to return home. The officers suspect they haven't seen the last of Leroy and his family. As justice is served in Ash County, two hours away in Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Brad Lawson is on a routine patrol when he receives a rousing call from Deputy Burke Murray. Hello. Go get what? Oh. Oh. Nice. You just made my day. I love you. The officers have just received a tip about the potential whereabouts of two fugitives. Gloves and the glasses are coming on. You know what we're getting ready to do? We're going after two people on the most wanted list. Supposedly living in a tent. A local couple, husband and wife Logan and Rose Leedy, has been on the run from the law for about a year. I'm excited about this. Like somebody standing in line on Black Friday for towels at Walmart. No. <laughs> Deputies Lawson and Murray rendezvous in a nearby parking lot. Picture these dudes. What's he for? Looks like he's about served to the left of Darwin's door. <laughs> What's her name? Rose Lee. Got Once they got any kids out there? No, we went and looked, but apparently yeah. she's got the kids. We've not gonna talk to the house where they're supposed to be two or three times. Mom keeps saying she don't know where they're at. Somebody finally called in on us. Ten folks. Info. Perfect day to do it. Good rain. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> uh... A couple, they're on the run. They know that they're wanted. They have a house, but they've been hiding out in the tent in the woods, so we're gonna see if they're there. You don't know if they got weapons in that tent how hidden they are back in there, like if they got it set up, maybe they're on a little hill they can see us coming, so they'd have the advantage, you know. You don't know what their demeanor is. They could be one of them people like, oh, I'm not going to jail, I'm gonna do anything I can to stay out of jail. Um, 
recording now. Deputies carefully proceed down the path by the river, staying alert for anything. This could be the perfect hiding place for the husband and wife fugitives who may be armed. What's unpredictable about those situations is usually the person we're going to make contact knows that area well. They're heavily camouflaged. They usually see you coming before you can locate them. They have the advantage, so you have to approach with caution as much as you can. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, deputies Burke Murray and Brad Lawson have received a tip that two of the region's most wanted fugitives, husband and wife Logan and Rose Leedy, are hiding in a wooded area down by the river. The Leedys are wanted for a series of thefts it's locked. and have been on the lam for about a year. The officers close in on an abandoned building where they suspect the couple has taken refuge. Is it open? Hadn't been open in a while. Let's see through the hole over here. With the small building proving to be a bust, the deputies press on deeper into the woods. He goes way back in here. Deputy Lawson's years of experience tell him they're on the right track. If I was hiding out, I wouldn't be at the front. I'd be way back here. This would be the spot if somebody was hiding out. Deputy Lawson's suspicions seem to be confirmed. It looks like a big fire pit. Guarantee you this is it. Nope. They're not here now. With the trail cold and soggy, the deputies wrap up their search for the time being. I said it was good info at one time, but with all this rain, I'd say they've moved off. So as long as they don't know that we know this, they'll uh, they'll come back. All right, we'll keep checking. It's supposed to be nice this weekend. <laughs> it's been raining for about three days, heavy, steady. Eventually, hopefully, we'll catch up to them. As the hunt for Rose and Logan Leedy continues, elsewhere in Sullivan County. Another team of officers is out to serve a warrant on a fugitive believed to be staying with his family. This family, they always have warrants. We've had dealings with them before. They always stay the same place, and it's their mom's house. So typically, they're very resistant. Yeah, they don't want nobody to come in the residence. They've been doing it for a little while. They're used to the game. So hopefully, they'll be here when we get up here. Patrick Henson ran from officers the last time they tried to arrest him. So this time, they're taking no chances. Deputies rush to cover the back of the house, while Poff and Jackson approach the front. Nice. An older man. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are you doing, boss? Hey, not too bad. Is uh, Patrick in there? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Can you come here and talk to us? OK. Yeah. Thank you. That's easier than I thought. Several minutes pass, and no one returns to the door. The officers continue scanning the property, looking for any signs of Patrick. Door again. Oh, 
Hi, this is my house. Where's Patrick at? I don't know, he's not here. Okay, he what just. Do you, what do you need? You know, you know the game. We're not doing this over and over again. He already said he's here. He has no. No, he warrant. said he would check. He, that's Patrick's dad. No, I said, a, I said, is Patrick here? He said yes. I said, will you go get him? He said yes. Well, let me check. I don't shut the door again, cause I. No, I have dogs that will bite. I'm well, not gonna just go leave it crack. Okay. Leave it crack, cause I don't, I don't, I don't well, trust you all. We'll take the we'll take the dog to a room and put it in the room. I, I can't do that. I have three of them. As the woman steps back inside, someone else approaches the door. Matt, don't What's shut the door. She door. doesn't want you crossing the threshold. Open the door. Right. Well, we want this door closed. We got a do warrant. Have an arrest warrant. Yes, we do. It we'll has this next. address on it. We have a right to search, and I don't want y'all shutting the door. No, you don't. Just because we open the door doesn't allow you in here, and you know that. Yes, it does. How? You don't, because we have, we have, you don't have reasonable have doubt to believe he's here. We got a warrant, like I said, to be in this residence to look for Patrick. Officer Jackson, come on up here. I'm just telling you the truth. It's not my house, so I, whoever's I'm not house it is. You out or not. Where's your mom at? She's back here, probably hiding Patrick. Mom, you need to come here because he's got his foot wedged in the door. He's got a arrest warrant, but they don't know if he's here or not. Okay. Well, what do you want to do here? Keep a good eye on the lower level. The deputies and Patrick's family are in a good old-fashioned Tennessee standoff. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, deputies are in a standoff. They've come to arrest Patrick Henson, but his family is stonewalling them. He's got an arrest warrant, but they don't know if he's here or not. Okay. Well, what do you want to do here? His foot's in the door. Keep a good eye on the lower level. If she's a homeowner, she needs to come to the door and talk to us. Matt. Yeah, I don't want to. She's the homeowner, so she needs to come. There he is. Finally, Patrick comes to the front door. No problem, I, was, I was getting ready to see my daughter, man. If y'all could have came three hours know. later, I would have came. He's going to see his daughter. We haven't seen in two weeks because we I mean, don't have a car. Man, could we not no just? More. No more. Time. I mean, honestly, because we could take I'm you to jail. Home. So, I mean, for saying yes. he wasn't in there. So. I was just going to see my daughter. I didn't daughter. say that. I said I'd see No more talking. No. Close the door. All right, roll. You know, they've done the same thing. They always do. I don't want to let you in, I want to say he's not there, can't prove that he's there. So they think if you can't prove they're there, that you can't come in. They think they're lawyers, basically. So ended up, you know, stayed there long enough. Eventually, uh, Patrick just came on out. So luckily we didn't have to force our way in because that would have been the next step. We were just being courteous, giving them the time to let him come out instead of us having to go in and get him. But this isn't Deputy Poff's first encounter with Patrick. Poff knows me. All too well. I went to school with Poff. He's on our Yeah. So I took that sweet whiskey once I knew you were good. It was a long day in bloom. About 10 minutes, I was going to see my daughter for her fifth birthday. So it's kind of like, damn, man, if y'all would give me five more hours, I would have showed up here. All right, Mark, let's go around the corner over here to the left. Once someone posts bail for Patrick, he will be free to leave. My bond's 500, so I'd owe you 50. You know, my dad will pay it when you, take, when you get there. Appreciate you. As Patrick waits to be bailed out of jail, over in Ash County, North Carolina, a report of a domestic emergency comes in from a family that officers have visited all too often. The husband had dementia. She's advising his daughter is there, trying to take him out of the home at this time. Deputy Jeremy Monday races to the home of Leroy Rash. 
the same man who was arrested for striking his stepdaughter. This time, the disturbance involves Leroy's daughter, Melissa. Just got a call to a domestic situation. Apparently, it's a dementia patient, and the daughter's trying to get the dementia patient out of the house. Probably really not a domestic. It's just they're trying to do the right thing for them. But we're going to go out here and check and make sure. Deputy Monday is joined by Sergeant Darrell McClure. Uh, what's going on? He has bicycle yeah, damage, and Melissa's in there oh, trying to no. get him to leave with her. Well, she's messed up on wheels. She thinks uh, she can take him out of here. She don't live here, does she? Mm -hmm. Who lives here? Yeah. You want her here? No, I don't. I've actually okay. leave several times. What's going on? <laughs> this is my yeah. He's in a pretty bad state. He's got the mistakes. He's had a massive strikes. So uh, uh, the stress is really getting the best of him. <laughs> so I've agreed to take him with me, get him a hotel room, get him a break, and she don't want him to go. I'm absolutely sure that if I keep on living here with her that I'm going to pass away or mm -hmm. from being stressed out and tormented so much. I mean, I've got, I've got those And I'm not going to lie to yeah. you. She's probably going to tell you I've not got a stable home, but I'm going to rent a motel. And i got plenty of well, money. Well, here, here's the bottom motel. line. He stays here. And she don't want you here. And she don't thing. want you here. And she said he's not going anywhere. Now, is she your caretaker? You, you can carry yourself? She got power of attorney? Well, or no. There's no power she's of attorney. My, she's I, my, I don't want to stay with my wife. She, he don't want to be here now. And okay. you're forcing me to I'm stay I'm not forcing here. you to stay anywhere. You can, you, you're free to leave anytime you okay. want to. Well, I want to leave with her. Good okay. God, what's wrong with y'all? This is what we're trying to say. You can't be okay. on the property. But if, I, but if you was so happen to drive down the road and you see your dad there walking, get him in the car and take him. Can, can. Right. Hey, sir, you're free to leave if you want to go. But make sure you get your clothes and your medication. I don't even want to need. get my clothes. You have to have your medication. Sir, and it's raining out here. You might need to get a jacket. No. If you he's wanting to leave like uh, that. Let him leave like he that. Needs, uh, he needs to leave he's a going if you are going with him. He's ready to go. He's got to have his medicine if he goes anywhere. You can't deny him his medicine. He is his own person, so he can leave at his own free will. Just like you, if you wanted to leave, you could leave. He has just as much right to his cars and his medication as you do. Melissa's not getting in that car. She's messed up on wheels. I, I am not. Who's got licenses? And I have driver's license, so they need to get in the car with me because they don't. Nobody got no driver's license to be driving no other car. Since neither Melissa nor her father Leroy can legally drive, yeah, I know you have driver's license. A family friend volunteers to give them a ride to a motel. Meanwhile, Leroy's son, Jesse, tries to convince his father and Melissa not to drive away. When they refuse to get out of the car, Jesse kicks the vehicle in anger. Melissa races from the scene. Now, whatever help he needs, I don't know. I'm not being here, but you do. We she took the car. The man's rights yeah. are. <laughs> Which way did she go? Down this way? <laughs> 120 to any SHP car. Can I be on the lookout for a white 2002 Impala with Virginia plates? Okay, what we had there was what I like to call a good mess. What started as a domestic disturbance has escalated into a high speed pursuit.
Ash County, North Carolina, it's a race against time to catch a getaway vehicle. One to Ash County, I'm 10-8. route to find the vehicle. Deputies are on the hunt for Melissa Rash. After a heated family argument, Melissa has taken a family member's car and is driving her father, Leroy, without a license. That's 15, uh, 20 or 112. The vehicle head back towards town. 10-10, we've located the vehicle. Copy, 10 to 1. Go ahead, 112. <laughs> Well, let's see your license. You ain't got them, do you? I no license. And you just drove out of there. No, All right, come on, let's go. Way. No, you ain't got no license, you're going to jail. I just what moved the car, they were kicking the car. Well, it don't matter, you drove it on the highway. Well, I had to get out of there. Oh, my God. 120 County, I've located it at Brown's Chapel. I'll be 1072, one white female. My boyfriend has wife. It, it still don't matter. I had to. I'm, I'm not was driving kicking no my more. car. It don't matter. You drove it from there to right there. Was he supposed to kill me or shoot me before I drove the car? That's why, that's so you have, have no driver's license. license. You drove on the state highway with no driver's car. license. Who was kicking the car? My son. I mean, you got in the car and you drove down the road. I mean, Come on. Let it be a judge decide. We argue. I got to go to jail, Larry. Thank you for your help. Well, I mean, I don't know where to put you now. He's his own person. Well, we can't leave him out here like this. They're not forcing me to go home, Doug. Just go ahead and leave him. It's going to be a mess. He don't want to go back to the house. He's not got no place to go right now. He's going to have a place to go anyway. I'm going to go back to his house. I'll go back to his house. I'll go back to his house. I brought my car down here to keep it from being damaged before I couldn't drive. Well, get in here. I'll just write you a ticket, and we're going to sit here, and if the car moves, Non-licensed driver. I'm in the get car. Get in the car so you won't get any more wet. Where is it in the car? Oh, I'm not at. Him... So I don't want you to get sick. I enjoy the ride, or you might at. I don't want Where you to get sick. He's going to write me a ticket. I don't want to stand here and argue Listen, with you later. Listen, he's going to write me a ticket. I want him to leave us alone. I'm going to get some a licensed driver and drive. What's your address? I'm homeless right now. How are you going to take care of him if you're homeless? I've got plans to get him taken care of. I wouldn't put him in this situation. Later that afternoon, Melissa and Leroy are safely transported to a motel. And I'll see how you can take care of somebody that's sick when you ain't got a home yourself. My concern with everything is his daughter, she's a known pill user. So there's a good possibility that's why she come to get him is because of all the medications that he has. I hope that she don't steal them or sell them, but they're taking him to a hotel right now. And what happens to him from there, be hard to say, but he's gonna be a whole lot happier, so that's all we can do. A family crisis put on hold in Ash County. As day turns to night, over in Sullivan County, another drama is about to unfold. Deputy Richard Lingerfeld is cruising the highway when he spots a car pull into an empty parking lot and shut off its lights. Lingerfeld turns around to investigate. Car pulled over in that store parking lot back there that's closed. He pulled over there and cut his headlights off. So I'm just making sure that. Uh, he's seen me turn around, so he's leaving. See which way he goes. The driver has apparently seen the deputy and wants nothing to do with him. Up ahead, the car has ducked off the highway, so Lingerfeld turns down the same road and gives chase. I don't know what he was up to, but he acted suspicious when he seen me 
He pulled out and then he turned on his side road. And I think he's blacked out on me. I don't know where he went. Yeah, he's blacked out. I don't know where he went to. I'm gonna backtrack to see if he pulls out. He was hiding for something. And what that is, Deputy Lingerfeld intends to find out as he scours the darkness for any sign of the missing vehicle and its driver. In County, Tennessee, Deputy Richard Lingerfeld is in a game of cat and mouse with a mysterious motorist. The driver has ducked off the highway onto a small side road and cut the headlights to avoid being seen. Moments later, something catches the deputy's eye. Bingo, Lingerfeld spots the car parked halfway down a driveway with its lights off. Hello. Howdy. I was looking for the sheriff's office. Um, the reason I pulled in behind you, I seen you pulled in and the store over and then you cut your lights off and then when I turned around, you put your lights on and pulled out. And I was doing, I, I was texting and I didn't want to drive. There's a lot of stuff there at the store. Okay, um, do you live here? No, sir. Okay, why did you pull in this driveway then? Because I didn't know what was going on. I was just scared. Like I said, I pulled in there to text and I didn't want to drive and text. I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, that's that's good. Do you, you see what I'm saying, though? You know, it kind of looked when I turned around, you pulled out real quick with your head and turned your headlights on, and then you pulled in this driveway. Have you been drinking anything tonight? Just a little bit. Okay, how much have you had to drink? Probably, a, it's been about maybe two hours since I had a beer. Is that all you had, one beer? Maybe two. Maybe two. Yeah. Have you ever... Uh, had any DUIs or anything? I had one probably when I was 19, and I'm 57. And that's the last time I had any trouble. Well, you wouldn't do a couple of tests for me? Yes, yes, sir. And, and I'll just tell you, I, I had a couple of buddies of mine came in from out of town. I had high school friends. I hadn't seen 15 or 20 years. I hadn't had anything to drink but ice water for at least three or four hours. If you will, step out of the car for a minute. On my pen, I want you to fall with your eyes only. Don't Whatever fall you with your head, just your eyes. Okay? The deputy okay. conducts a series of standard sobriety tests. One, two, three. One, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, excuse me. Right now, I think that you've had a little bit more than what you say you've had. Uh, you're a little bit too impaired, in my opinion, to be driving. You're being placed under risk. But I'm going to help you out a little bit. Have you got somebody that can come get your vehicle? Uh, I can call my brother. Hey, man. Um, I'm out here, and I've been arrested for um, probably having too much to drink. But uh, I need you to come pick up my car if you can. Tell him I'll be right there. I right, appreciate it. No problem. All right, bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Just have to say, I'll tell you, get your hand just a second. Driving while uh, you've had a little bit too much to drink with your friends that you ain't seen in a while, there's a line there you shouldn't cross. And unfortunately, he crossed it. As Deputy Lingerfeld finishes processing this DUI case, in another part of the county, Deputy Travis Jackson has just received a tip on the possible whereabouts of a couple on the most wanted list, Logan and Rose Leedy. The Leedys are wanted for a string of thefts and have avoided capture for more than a year. 
We got a, a vague description on where Logan and Rose Leedy may be. They're staying with a couple. We were able to confirm an apartment complex in which we went to last night, and they wouldn't come to the door, but we knew they were inside. So we're gonna go up here, and if we can confirm that they're inside and that they're just not coming to the door, then we can force entry and go in and effect the arrest now. Deputy Jackson meets up with deputies Woods and Barrett to discuss a plan of action. We're gonna go in blacked out. We're gonna park down in front of it, sneak up to it, see, see what we can hear, and go from there. And then we can take it a step further. You ready? Yeah. We're right down from the apartments now, so we're getting ready to shut it down and Go dark, go in, covert. Change 49, I'll be 27, that vehicle, you're 394, right past DB&T. Is it these? No, that's the ones back in here. Just watch your step, just be careful about the gravel when you mm -hmm. step. As Deputy Jackson takes his position outside the front door, he can hear several people talking inside the apartment. While listening for evidence that the ladies are inside, Jackson overhears talk about other potential criminal activity. He's giving me two five inches. That's the perk. They've apparently got a bunch of meals in there. We have to drink it any time before lunch? It would be easier if y'all could come get it. Deputy Jackson is convinced his fugitives are inside and decides the time to strike is now. Sheriff's office. Jackson and his team have staked out an apartment in Sullivan County where they suspect fugitives Logan and Rose Leedy are hiding out. I'm sick of that From the sounds of things, there is criminal activity involving pills going on behind closed doors. I don't give a it's my pills, I'm doing it anyway. Deputy Jackson decides to take action. Sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. Hello. Hey. Hey, who else here? Um, me and my fiance and um, Amanda and uh, Rose and Logan. Who are you looking Logan for? Logan and Rose here. Is that who you're looking for? Where are they at? Give me just a second, because they are was turning their self in. They were getting ready. Well, let me let me step in here. You can is step it? right in. Step right here. Which room are they in? Listen, Rose I heard. And listen, Logan. Tell them to step out here and step out here can now. You guys, just step out, please. Where y'all at? They're just looking for y'all. Step over here, face away from me. Take her. Come here. Come here. Where you going? <laughs> just face away from me. You ain't got anything on you. Put your hands behind We knew this was going to happen. We were waiting. They were waiting. Who else is here? Hey, Justin. He's in the bathroom. Tell him I know he's getting rid of pills. I don't care about that. No, no. We ain't got nothing to do with them. Yeah, that's good. Cool. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you coming to the door. Everybody, everybody else, just sit down until we get everything else squared away and all that. I hate sending them but I mean, it'll get done and over with. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, he done padded me. I've never been to jail. I don't know what to say. 
Nobody else is here? No. Okay, I'm just gonna take a quick look, okay? Before y'all knocked on the door, she said, I'm ready for my mugshot. She knew right. she was going. I wanted to answer, but I couldn't. And I didn't want her to go, because she was scared, but she's living in the tent. Oh. I understand. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Yes, sir. What's your name? We're going to we're check in. I love you. Wait on me, you know. We're going to be I will. Can I get a blue one? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm looking for a blue one. Well, I'll get it. 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 I'll get